So most likely this uh, video is getting longer than it needs to be, uh, but I thought I would just go through uh, the process one more time. It's going to be, look very, very similar, um, but I'm going to quickly point out the difference between um, CentOS 1 and CentOS 2. So CentOS 2 we're going to install in the same way. Uh, we're going to have the same configuration roughly, but the difference is that CentOS 2 will not have any graphics. It will only be the uh, terminal that we're interacting with. Um, so that's very common when we're dealing with servers or containers and stuff like that. Um, so do not be do not be intimidated. Remember your training, blah blah blah. Okay, so we're going to use the exact same link as before. I'm going to go forward. Um, I'm going to once again give it the same amount of memory, the same amount of CPUs. Um, let me quickly verify with the notes that I have here. So this was graphical and we're going to move over here to CLI, minimal install. Um, the disk space is going to be 20 gigs, uh, CPU 1, memory 2 gigs. So let me go over here, I'm going to change this to 20. Go forward. Be sure to rename this CentOS 2. Be sure to customize configuration before install. And we're going to go to CPUs, make sure we check this box, otherwise nothing works. And we'll begin installation. Yes, we want to apply the changes. So, yes. Okay, so we'll see you in a little bit uh, after this uh, initial downloading has completed. Okay, this should be quite familiar to you by now. Uh, make sure you scroll down to get to continue. Okay, so once again, let's change this to Toronto. actually drag this down so I can see most of this at the same time. Okay, this one once again we'll make sure this is turned on. We'll make sure that this is set to be sent OS2. Click on done. Now let's quickly refer back to the notes. So, for this one, we're going to make sure that we stay at minimal install. And we're going to go to installation destination. I will configure partitioning. We'll click on done. We will once again ask it to create something for us, but after it comes out with. Um, a configuration we're going to modify it so we'll make sure that this is ext4 once again uh, but we'll make sure also that uh, root will be only eight gigabytes and then we're going to add another mount point over here and it's going to be our home and the size of home is going to be two gigabytes so I'm going to give it 2048 just to make sure that that gets set um, and I'm also going to make sure the name is home and I'm going to make sure that this file system is ext4. Okay, so very, very similar to what we were doing with um, the uh, sense, uh, sorry, C7 host. Okay, and one more to look at it. So this should be about 8 gigs and ext4, and this should be 2 gigs ext4. So that all looks good. Click on done. We'll accept the changes. And that should be everything. So we can proceed with the installation. While this continues, um, I'm going to once again 
set a root password, and it's going to be the same as the other two virtual machines that we've already created. And again, another user. Same password. Click on done. And we'll wait for this to finish. And um, once we get into this, please take the same steps as you've done with uh, CentOS 1. Uh, disable SE Linux, uh, remove Firewall D, install IP tables, run a yum update, and um, also please note the IP address for CentOS 2. But you've seen that in already, so um, I won't go through those steps with you now. Um, once this com completes, I'll make some quick notes about CentOS 3, but uh, yeah, stay tuned. Okay, as I said, um, when you're setting up CentOS 2, um, you're only going to have the command line interface, so you'll log in. Uh, you don't have Vim, you have VI. You might find that VI is a little bit harder to use, um, but just roll with it. And finally, um, when you're getting the IP address, which you'll need, for CentOS 2, you can't use the ifconfig um, uh, command. You'll have to use IP space address, uh, but you'll get exactly the same information. Uh, so make sure you mark down those IP addresses and also make note of the time, like how long it takes to install everything. Okay, so that said, we're now here. We should have two virtual machines and we're going to go through the process to build one more and uh, this one the um, the process is slightly different what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same link but we're also going to give it a, a kickstart file so we'll go over here uh, we're gonna use network install I'm gonna go forward I'm going to use exactly the same IP over here um, but I'm gonna go to URL options and I have uh, the space over here for kernel options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to um, all of the uh, procedure, the basically lab two. Um, I'm going to try and cut and paste uh, this information here, throw it in there. So this needs to begin with a KS, but I have a little space in there, so I'm going to get rid of the space. So KS equals, and then all of this in here. So I'm going to click on forward. I make sure that this is two gigs of RAM. The instructions are pointing out that as being particularly important, so let's make sure we do it. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to make sure that we use 15 gigs for this one. Oh, and one thing I notice, uh, this is asking me to do two CPUs. So it seems like we're going to need this for something a little bit more intense. Um, but yeah, 15 gigs. Yeah, that looks all right. That looks fine. So give me a moment just to be reading through because I don't want to miss anything. Okay, so we go forward. We're going to name this CentOS 3. Make sure we customize configuration. We're going to click on Finish. Make sure that we are copying host CPU configuration. Click Apply. And let's begin. Okay, most likely this is going to take some time, so um, I'll pause the video for now and uh, we'll get back into it once uh, something notable has happened. Welcome back. So 
Uh, hopefully what you noticed is when we got into the uh, configuration screen for CentOS 3, um, we didn't really have to do anything. Uh, we didn't have to choose any of the options. Those options were included in our Kickstarter file. Um, so now we get into our login screen and um, we, we didn't really set anything up so we don't really know what's going on with this. So what you want to do is be um, opening up the uh, screen. What you want actually want to do, sorry, is uh, open the uh, configuration file. So I'm just going to go over here and click on it. And uh, what do we have inside? Well, hopefully what we got is a lot of information um, in terms of, uh, well, system configuration, right? So let's go through and see if we can find out um, what the name of the user is. And you can see over here the username is OPS235 and the password is 235. So that should be good. Um, we're going to use that user to try and um, log into this machine. Um, so yeah, you can make note of all this other information. Um, and also maybe write down the root password, which is also, well, that's not very secure, but you know, like I say, uh, it'll work for us right now. So let's get into this machine. Okay, that seemed to work. And um, maybe the first thing I'll do is I'm going to make a note of this IP address um, because we want to do that for all of our machines, of course. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is um, switch to the root user. Okay, and same steps as before. So first thing let's do is um, disable SE Linux okay so we can see that this is enforcing we don't want to be enforcing we want to change that to disabled um, so VI what you can do what I did here and maybe what you want to do is um, using J, K, L, and H to be navigating around, so J is moving down. Um, you can move to the beginning of a word and press C, W to change the word, so that's a very quick way of deleting a word and um, just replacing it with something else and entering insert mode so you can type. Press escape and then X to um, save and exit. So there we go. Next thing I'm gonna do is you guessed it, firewall D stuff. So I'm going to go system CTL, disable firewall D. We removed the sim link, that's all fine. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to see, moving by word doesn't work here. Um, I'm going to stop the service. Then I can yum remove it. And we'll let this run. Um, so one thing that you probably want to do is make a note of the root password and the user uh, here. Um, hopefully you remember what course you're taking. There we go. Uh, the next thing I want to do, yum install. Okay, so probably I've made a spelling error there. Let me just quickly check. Yeah. Not IP table service, IP table services. So once again, make sure you're paying attention to the uh, messages that the shell is giving you. Um, so if I, you know, if this command had failed and I didn't realize it, it you know, could cause some confusion later on as I'm going through these labs and stuff like that. I do want to accept this key. So there we go. That is complete. Let's start her up. Enable IP tables. Okay. And change this one to start. 
there we go. Let me quickly take a look and refer to what we want to be doing here. So we've disabled SE Linux, we have gotten rid of firewall and we've installed IP tables. The only thing left to do, uh, we've made a note of the IP address, so that's all good. And uh, the next thing to do is yum update. Yes. Okay, so once this completes, uh, what I can do is just type in shutdown dash H um, to shut this virtual machine down and we should be done with the installation, but we are not done yet, so stay tuned. Okay, so how as you can see, I've got one, two, and three here. Um, they're all shut down now. Beautiful three machines all ready to be tampered with and uh, messed around with um, so that means let's uh, well we want to make sure that we uh, back up some of this work that we're doing here um, so that's going to be the focus of this next little bit so what I'm gonna do is bring up the instructions take a look it's gonna ask me to go um, I'm in C7 host now I'm going to move Actually, let me maximize this so it's a little bit easier to read. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go around to terminal over here. Like I say, we want to get you uh, getting a little bit used to um, using the command line. So if you're not already happy with the command line, um, now is the time to get a little bit happier with the command line. So I'm going to go into libvirt and we can take a look at what's in here. We've got something called images. Let's go into images. Oh, permission denied. So what we need to do is become root. So let's do that right now. OK. So we've actually been switched into our root uh, directory. So let's do it all again. So there's images. Let's go take a look inside images. What you see is um, three very large files called CentOS 1, 2, and 3 with the suffix .qcow2. Okay, so I'm going to change this a little bit so I can turn on human readable. Um, and we can take a look and we have, well, we can see one is 16 gigs, 21 gigs, 16 gigs. Um, Okay, so these are our image files. These basically are the uh, virtual file systems for each of our uh, three virtual machines. And what we want to do is we want to back these up. Okay, um, this is maybe the most important part of the lab in some ways. Um, countless times there are students who have lost their images or things have gotten wrecked. Um, a lot of what we're doing in this um, course is things that very easily go wrong. So um, I recommend that you have backups after every lab that we do. And we also want to take these and um, copy them onto a USB drive. So no matter what happens to your SSD, you'll have some copy of all this work that you've done up until this point. And Hopefully you've noticed that it's quite a bit of work and it's not really something that we want to just um, lose. So let's let's back these up. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, take a look at the uh, lab notes. And you can see that we're going to be using uh, gzip. Um, so hopefully you're familiar with you know zip files and stuff like that. Um, we could go you know uh, you could go fancier there's a lot of other compression sort of uh, algorithms and stuff like that but let's just keep it really really um, you know classic I guess so I'm going to enter CentOS 2 1.qcow if you learned this in ULI 101 uh, you may remember that what we're basically doing here is we're taking this file CentOS 1, uh, this huge, huge image file, and we are redirecting, redirecting it sorry, 
into this command gzip. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully we're taking an input file and we're compressing it. And then the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending it into our user's home directory. So for me, that's eBrower, but you know, do whatever you like. Don't do whatever you like. Use your actual user. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Um, and I'm going to call it backup.gz. Okay. So if you're following this, what we're doing is we're taking CentOS 1, we are throwing it into gzip, and then we are throwing the zipped file into our user's home folder. Okay. When I run this, um, you're not going to see a whole lot of progress bars or anything like that. It's going to seem like uh, the computer has just stalled. Do not stop it. Do not cancel it. Let it go. Um, you know, if you really want to be watching, you know, the process and stuff like that, what you can do is maybe open top or some sort of process manager and you'll see um, stuff running in the background. Um, you can do that just to convince yourself that the computer has not actually crashed. Um, but um, we're going to do this and then we're going to do it for CentOS 2 and CentOS 3. Um, so I'm going to let that run and then we'll come back uh, once that process is complete. Okay, one important thing I want to point out is uh, to be perfectly safe, what you want to do is um, back up your CentOS files to a USB drive um, that is not your SSD, basically. So if you're having any issues with your SSD, um, it definitely happens. Um, you'll want to protect yourself against that. So here I've mounted a um, USB drive, uh, just a thumb drive or whatever. I can press OK. Um, and I should be able to go over here and find it. Uh, I can click on Connect. I'm going to click on OK. Um, and hopefully it pops up over here. So it's got this name Ubuntu 1804, um, except I've just like, you know, I've cleared it out. So it doesn't really have that anymore. And what I should be able to do is grab these files over here and um, copy them over here. Um, so I can see that the copy is in progress, so that's great. Um, we'll let that continue. If you have any sort of um, situation where you are not able to do this and you see maybe um, over here over here if you see icons that look like big padlocks um, that means you did what I did initially which was you uh, created uh, we'll just get rid of that for a second um, you'll it means that you did what I did initially which was uh, when you were doing the gzip uh, you were doing that as um, root and so what that means is you get into a situation where um, your uh, files are owned by the root user and anything owned by the root user uh, by default um, normal users won't have the permission to move those or change those or anything like that um, so it's understandable if you just want to be doing this stuff through um, the graphical user interface because we haven't really talked too much about mounting or anything like that, so that's totally fine. Um, I'll show you the command over here to be doing stuff like that. Um, the command is change owner. You'll be wanting to do this as root, by the way. Um, so change owner to eBrower or whatever your username is. Um, the colon. The colon means that um, you're changing the the owner and you're also changing the group um, which you should be doing and um, after that just the name of the uh, file that you want to be doing okay so hopefully this uh, process is going to go smoothly um, if you have issues uh, bring it up absolutely in the lab